Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen ben Danoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. A lot of things are happening around the Passover right now, a lot of violence around the world. We've had the blood moons that have occurred, mainly visible over the United States, which kind of leads me to wonder if it isn't a significant or maybe a, a prophetic overtone there that judgment may strike the United States first. Uh, here in Israel, it was not visible. Uh, and that, again, maybe a, a little speculatory on my own part there, but uh, can't, can't help but wonder. Of course, we uh, had the, one of the first attacks in, in years of anti-Semitism against Jews in the United States, uh, a Ku Klux Klan member killing, gun, gunning down in Kansas uh, in a Jewish community there. Also here in Israel, in Hebron, there was a Palestinian man in Hebron that killed a high-ranking police of, uh, officer while he was in the car with his family on Passover. He was killed instantly. His wife was wounded, who's pregnant. In fact, we were listening to her live on the radio today with Gershon as we were headed to the barley harvest. Uh, very sad news indeed. Uh, she, like I said, she's pregnant. Her Also, I believe it was her son that was wounded in the ambush as well. Hamas praising... Uh, this terrorist for his uh, works there. Well, you know, while they glorify the evil deeds that they do there, they need to be reminded, and so does the rest of the world. The God of Israel is not just standing by idly while all this savagery goes on against his people, regardless of where they may be at in the world, but especially here in Jerusalem. Uh, we've also taken your prayer request to the Temple Mount, we are, excuse me, to the Temple Wall, the Wailing Wall in the Kotel of Israel. Uh, there was able to take and place the prayer request in the walls there. Now we are still uh, receiving requests, and for Jews, we our Passover is a week-long event. Uh, I am trying to continually bring more of those requests down there. Uh, and what I've done already, uh, in, including it at about midnight on the Passover night, as well as the following day there of Passover, I took and read your requests, prayed over your requests there, each, an indiv each one as an individual. And I know that there's sometimes there's a little bit of concern when people say you go to the Wailing Wall to pray. Not much, but occasionally we do get some people that feel like that that is not correct. Well, true, it is true that Yeshua lives in our heart. And we are praying to the God of gods, the God of heaven that lives in our heart. That is true. But I do believe whether I'm praying in my closet, whether I'm praying driving down the road, the thing is I'm praying for you. And of course, it's not an altar. It is a place where Jews go to pray because it is near where the Holy of Holies once stood. Gershon Solomon, my dear friend, that is the president and founder of the Temple Mount Faithful Institute, has a beautiful picture in his office of the Shekinah glory, which is the pillar of fire that came down on the wall. So no doubt God does hear when his people pray earnestly. It's not so much the wall. We know the wall is not holy itself. But it's the fact that the faith of the people touch God. There's something about the place that's special to us, especially as Jews. So we ask you, send your testimonies to us. Post them on our Facebook page at Stephen Denoon on Facebook. You can visit us there. We'd love to see you post uh, the testimonies where God has answered these prayers for you. All kinds of prayers. And we ask you as well, as the week goes on, if you would, those of you that watch the videos here, watch the news broadcast or the teaching side of our ministry here, join with us in prayer for these people because God hears no matter where you are. And that's one thing that is true. So we ask that you join in many, many different requests, everything from salvation, healing, cancers, tumors, diabetes. We had hundreds, literally hundreds of requests and I'm trying to still take each and every one that the death angel pass over you. And uh, other things that are going on in Israel as well. In fact, last night there were, uh, I, I believe it was four gentlemen that were arrested for trying to offer up a sacrifice, a lamb, a sacrifice a lamb on the Temple Mount. Well, we realize that God's lamb has already been sacrificed, so there's no need in that. Also, another interesting thing, we actually got to take part of 
history being made here in Israel. God required of Moses, he required of the children of Israel during the barley harvest, which is the first harvest, it's the earliest crop that ripens in Israel is the barley harvest. And we know that Yeshua is the barley harvest, no doubt about that as well. But we were invited by Gershon Solomon, who is the president and founder of the Temple Mount Faithful of, in Land of Israel movement, with him and along with his companion Zev, who is a dear friend of his. We went out to the fields, and my wife and myself, and we participated in the first fruits, the barley harvest. This first fruits, as you will see, preceding the newscast here with Gershon Solomon, as he begins to speak about the Passover event, that this harvest here will be taken up to the Temple Mount as we march from Jaffa Gate in Jerusalem tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. So if you're here in Jerusalem and you'd like to take part in that event, you can meet us at 10.30 a.m. at the Jaffa Gate there, the Jaffa Gate, and we will march to the Temple Mount. And God will see the sincerity of our hearts knowing that the children of Israel, though they have not recognized who the true barley is, at least they're trying to bring Mashiach in our lifetimes. God bless you. I'm Stephen Bendenu with Israeli News Live. Baruch Hashem. Okay, we came today to this uh, wonderful field to cut the first fruits of the barley. And as uh, God commanded us and asked us to take it, to cut it today. This is the right day to do it, to cut it, to take it to Jerusalem, and then to bring it to the Temple Mount, to give it to God as an offering to God. The first fruits of the barley, not for people. The first fruits will go to God as an offering. And this was brought in the biblical times when the temple existed. It was brought to the Temple Mount, to the temple, okay? And um, the priest used to take it up and put it like this on the altar. And all the altar, it was burned, you know? Amen. And everything for the glory and the holy of God. Amen. Amen. And uh, we are now in time of spring in Israel. This is the holiday of Pesach, yes. Passover. And um, yesterday, actually, was the first day of this great holiday. This holiday indicates freedom of the Jewish people, of the Israeli nation, Amen. Yes. from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land of Israel that God gave them forever. Two days before, we had to make the Passover sacrifice, which indicates, you know, the becoming. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. okay. Which indicates that God, when He came to punish the Egyptians because they did not want to allow the Israelis to go out from slavery. So God in the night, you know, passed on all the houses of the Egyptians, including the palace of the king, the Paro, and punished them terrible when he um, uh, punished the firstborn sons of all the Egyptians. But he, as we say in Hebrew, Pasach, which means when he came to a Jewish house, what? He crossed over. 
and he did not touch. He just blessed this house. Yes. And uh, um, he said to the Jews to put a sign of blood yes. on the doors of the Jews. So he will know which house is Jewish in Egypt. And he caused over these houses and just punished the houses of the Egyptians, the firstborn sons of them. And this is the reason that this holiday is called Pesach. Pesach in Hebrew means cross, cross over. And God calls, crossed over the Jewish houses. So, um, Monday afternoon, we had to make a Passover sacrifice. Yes, Passover sacrifice indicates also this great event of freedom that God saved the Israeli people from slavery in Egypt to freedom and the exodus to the promised land. So um, this is actually a family sacrifice. You know, every family, every family in the biblical times when the temple existed, they used to bring the uh, uh, Passover sacrifice, a lamb, yes. and it was sacrificed on the altar, and then they took the meat of the lamb and made a Seder Pesach. They had to eat it until 12 o'clock night. Okay, not one minute later. Yes. And thank to God about the miracles that he made to the Israelis in Egypt and how he took them from Egypt to Israel. So this sacrifice, maybe it is the most important sacrifice that the Israelis did in the temple. Because this sacrifice signs the the great event that the God of Israel saved the Jewish people from, together with Moses, from slavery to freedom to the Holy Land. And near Sinai, it indicates also the becoming of the Jewish people, the Israeli nation, a nation from 12 tribes, one nation. The children of Israel, the people of the God of Israel. So this is the meaning of the Passover sacrifice. Unfortunately, we could not do it this time, this year, because the temple is still not rebuilt. But even when the temple is not rebuilt, this sacrifice can be made on, but on the Temple Mount, not in any other place, on the Temple Mount, on an altar that the Israelis should build, yes. even when the Temple is still not built. But again, because of, you know, the pressure that comes from all the world on Israel today, and, and, um, and especially from the Arab countries, you know, and, um, and uh, our leadership, our leadership is doing a terrible mistake when they are, I would say, they fear human being, yes. flesh and blood, and they don't trust enough on the God of Israel and say to them, you will come to the land, build it, settle it, Make it again the kingdom of your God and your kingdom and build the temple and sacrifice the Passover sacrifice, all the other sacrifices as well. Again, weakness of our leadership. They fear human being and not the God of Israel. But so a few years ago, we made a symbolic Passover sacrifice in a place close to the Temple Mount. 
but it was only a symbolic one, not the how it should be on the Temple Mount, because it was done outside of the Temple Mount, because we were not allowed to do it inside. So this year, the same. We could only pray the uh, prayer of the sacrifice, but not to make it on the Temple Mount. And I am sure that shortly, maybe in the next year, Passover, temple of God, the God of Israel, will be rebuilt on the Temple Mount. Yes. And the Temple Mount and Land of Israel faithful movement. Our movement, yes. the movement of God, this holy movement, is acting and struggling and doing everything day and night to bring to pass this great vision of the Jewish people since the destruction of the Second Temple in the year 70 CE. It was the greatest dream and vision to come back to the Promised Land, yes. to build the Temple of God again, and to worship Him on the right place that He chose to do it yes. on Mount Moriah, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Yes. So the Temple Mount and the Land of Israel Faithful Movement will not stop. Her campaign, her activities, her struggle to rebuild the Third Temple for the glory of God, for the people of Israel, the Third Temple will be also a house of praying for all nations. Yes. Exactly as the prophet Isaiah prophesied when he said that in the last days the house of the Lord will be re-established on the highest of the mountains and be exalted above the hills and all the nations will flow to Jerusalem to the God of Jacob to learn his ways yes, and Torah will go out from Jerusalem to all the nations Amen. and then will come a real peace yes. not as a false peace that now you know, the, the leadership, the president of America, the European Union, or the, or, or the Pope, or the, or you know, or the um, UN, United Nations organizations, organization. All of them speak about peace, but this is a false peace. That's right. That's right. Never, God will not allow to establish in the land that he gave to Israel only a foreign state, especially an enemy state, a terror state, so-called Palestinian that never existed, not in Israel and not in any other place in the world. They know very well our enemies and their allies all over the world that a Palestinian state in the Holy Land given to Israel only will lead to the destruction of Israel. But they have illusions. God will not allow it to happen. Amen. And he gave to his people Israel eternal life Amen. to fulfill a mission he created Israel for a mission, yes. a godly mission, to be a holy nation, a kingdom of, trees, of priests, and the light to the nations. So today we came here to fulfill another important commandment of God. Cut the first barley from the fields, bring it to my to my house, to my temple, and give it to me as an offering. Then you will cut the rest for yourself. 
And this we do with joy, with excitement, with love. We want to show our love to the God of Israel. And God, we came here to cut this belly and to bring it to you for your honor, for your glory, as an offering that we bring from our deep heart. And you see these wonderful fields, it grows up in the great, wonderful, beautiful country that you gave us, yes. the land of Israel, the promised land. So thank you, God, yes, for giving us this privilege to bring you this offering Amen. of the first fruits of the barley. And we shall pray that next year, and we shall do for this with all our strength yes. to build your temple, your house, and next year to bring again this barley as an offering to you, God, but in the same time, the Passover sacrifice. Yes. And we shall make pilgrimage of millions of Jews, Israelis, and people from the nations exactly as the prophet Isaiah prophesied, with joy to come to your house. Yes. And thank you that you gave us the privilege to be your servants, to honor you, to worship you, to love you. Thank you, God, thank the God of Israel. <laughs> I love you both of you very much. <laughs>